let's talk to Kane. Kane was calling in from Alabama. Kane, we're talking to you tonight. Congratulations, Kane. Thanks so much for waiting on the line. You're live on Truth Wanted. What's up? Hey, Johnny and Dan. Uh, hey. What I'm calling about is um, indoctrination. And I right. define two different types of doctor- indoctrination. One type is active. And, and, and by that, I mean... So you take part in your own indoctrination through Bible study and and, and participating in group uh, prayer and stuff like that. Okay. And the other type of indoctrination is what I call uh, passive indoctrination. This is indoctrination, being indoctrinated by uh, uh, being around ubiquitous uh, uh, religious iconography all your life and, and around people that you you believe that uh, everybody believes, you know. Okay. That's what the, that's the situation I was in in my youth, in a younger part of my life. Yeah. I believed everybody believed in in, in the God. Sure. Yeah. But okay. M- With yeah. My indoctrination is the type I call passive, and uh, because of that, and because of uh, I was raised up in an. Uh, a dysfunctional family. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do. I do not believe that a lot of people that profess belief do actually believe, and this includes a lot of pastors. Sure. And, and a lot of people is is the church community. Sure. You know, I think that's it, true it, for any religious you know, group. When, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when I talk of uh, people believing, uh, I'm saying they profess to believe. Sure. Uh, and that's, and I want to know how you felt about the different kinds of indoctrination and whether you think they would leave people like me with the inability to believe and also leave me in a position where I don't believe that yeah. a lot of people that profess to believe do. Yeah, so, so um, I don't like the word indoctrination. I don't use it a whole lot. And the reason why is because indoctrination is a tricky word because technically on some level, by some definitions, you could say a kindergarten teacher who's teaching a kid how to count and their ABCs is indoctrination because they're teaching them beliefs that they're not fully sufficient enough to question. Right. So like, yeah, on some level, like that's indoctrination, but that's like kind of commonly accepted indoctrination. Like we actually think that's kind of good indoctrination uh, most of us would say right like we want our kids to be able to know their abcs and one two threes right but like other kinds of indoctrination are basically like what's the socially unacceptable belief to have like scientology for example if you grew up in a scientology family i think most americans will say well yeah you were indoctrinated right because that's not the traditional belief system but like for most americans i think they'd also say that like mainstream branches of christianity some for some reason isn't indoctrination because it's kind of just the main religion in this country it's the most generally accepted religion so this is where i would depart with everyone else right i would agree with you in saying that like yeah that is indoctrination because it is beliefs that uh when critically uh, applied would probably not pass as well although there are some people who are arguably critical and still have a god belief i mean you know there's certainly people with college degrees and in advanced fields of study that do have God's belief. I will grant that. But for a lot of people who like us, who really look at this issue and study it and didn't really have a choice when they were children to accept those beliefs. Yeah. I had to kind of accept it uncritically. So indoctrination is kind of a tricky word and I don't know what sociologists have to say about it. I don't know if there's like scholarship on and how it's used. I imagine it's probably avoided for the most part, but maybe there's some places out there that, really use it but yeah indoctrination also kind of has kind of cultural baggage too because again what's indoctrination for some is just going to be the acceptance of normal quote-unquote beliefs for others so yeah tricky word johnny what do you think as you were talking and i was listening yeah. to everything that you said of course because yeah. you're because you're objectively dan that's right um i was also looking up the word the definition of indoctrination i think you stumbled did you go to, i'm sorry but did you go to the ffa's definition of indoctrination or did you go to the united states constitution yeah the irs or I know the form. Or the irs um, okay just i went i went to i went to dictionary.com okay which which as we all know 
He's legally binding. Legally <laughs> binding. Yeah. Um, but th- it has two words. There's an archaic definition of teaching or instruction. And yeah. like, you, like you said, you want to indoctrinate, teach. You want to instruct people on how to do certain tasks, learn certain skills. That's great. That's We all do it. We all do it. We all need it. But that's the archaic term, I think, in the last who knows how long. It's been, it's, it's been defined more regularly as... The process of a teaching a person or group to accept a set of beliefs uncritically. An yeah. example given, prisoners are subjected to brainwashing, indoctrination, and punishment. All horrible things. The thing that, that we're all about, I know you are, Dan, and I, I know I, I like to think I try to be, is, is not to have anyone accept anything that anything that we say uncritically. You know, question it. We're not authorities. We're having a conversation trying to get at it. And so... To the extent that there are, to get back to what the caller was talking about, are there, are there groups, was it socioeconomic groups? Is there a person's social background affect their ability to be indoctrinated? I would think to the extent that their background encourages or discourages and how they encourage or discourage critical thinking skills, reasoning skills, logic, um, uh, rhetorical like capabilities so i don't know if any one group economically socially uh, racially whatever that means national origin uh, gender wise has an has an advantage over that i do know that cis white het western guys seem to have the leisure the yeah um free time and amount of nine lives, you might say the forgiveness to be able to make those mistakes without great consequence uh, more often than people in other groups. Yeah. So, you know, particularly, yeah. Well, I was just going to add, right. I mean, like, I think across the board, I don't think it's too controversial to say if you look at, uh, you know, Western countries in particular compared to the rest of the world, you see that the more democratic a nation is, the more level higher average levels of income a nation has, like the less likely like they are to be religious, right? Like with the US being that very, very notable exception, this seems to be like a general trend. And I think there's a reason for that too, right? I think like religion obviously plays a social function in people's lives. It's more than just a philosophical set of beliefs, right? It is like a category of of thought, but it's also like a social institution in a lot of people's lives. Some people get their food from their local church. Some people get their friends and family uh, from part of their church, right? Like it's 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 kind of plays this bigger role in more than just like a philosophical concept of belief, which 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 I think you mentioned came by saying there's people who profess a belief, and you're right. I think there's some that maybe if they really thought about it, probably wouldn't be as convinced. But the convenience of religion is there, and it doesn't bother them to not have the belief, right? So. Uh, for me, it does bother me, which is like why I'm here now. But for some people, it just like doesn't even matter. It's just like, yeah, I'm a Christian, but it's like they don't even go to church. It's just like a social convention that they follow. Right. So, yeah, it's it's kind of complicated. But um, are people who are in less socially ed- uh, economically advantaged nations or groups going to be more likely to receive beliefs uncritically? I think that's true. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that's like. I don't know. I don't think that's like a huge observation. Do you think that's like a big, you think that's a controversial statement, Johnny? I don't, I don't, I don't know. You are muted right now, my friend. Some would say, thanks, Dan. Yeah. Uh, and I would say, thanks, Dan. Uh, I think the very way that, he, that people learn, it's yeah. a necessity. Actually, people, I would say all animals, probably they learn from their parents and all animals. Some of them are just abandoned and they, little clockwork machines but certainly humans uh, we are little sponges when we when we are little and we absorb we just listen it's not it's not good for little children to critically evaluate whether or not they should put their hand on the stove or they should walk off of a staircase right they we we teach children at certain ages up to a certain point to just listen to what i'm saying okay because I'm keeping you alive. And then yeah. as, and it's a spectrum, as they get a little bit older, good parents, I think most parents te- teach their children uh, to exercise their autonomy, to exercise their critical thinking skills and, and decide for themselves. And and those parents who do a really good job of it, they have kids who can function quite well 
in the world and they can operate independently. But the problem is, is that some of those lessons never get, you never, it's like, like we, we stop teaching about Santa Claus, but we a lot of times never stop teaching about Jingus Claus, you know, Jesus. And so those issues never are welcomed into the category of things that we question. In fact, it's discouraged. And uh, that's, I think, the problem. And I don't know how that how that falls up, falls down the, the demographic lines. There you go, Kane. A lot of our thoughts. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I follow what you're saying. I just uh, think that uh, uh, indoctrination is so... Uh, well, let me just say this. The organized religion knows that uh, you need to indoctrinate kids early. Yep. So that's why there's always a push to get everything they can into public schools. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's just like, yeah. I mean, that's, 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 yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, how many debates are happening in this country right now over what's being taught in public schools? And people think that kindergartners are learning like critical race theory, right? Like, like they don't even know what's happening in, in schools right now. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I, it's, there's obviously a power in institutionalizing that early education, right? It's the, it's the reason why we have such a whitewashed version of our world history, in particular American history in the U.S. public school mm. systems. Johnny, did you, when you were in school, did you learn that the Civil War was uh, m not about slavery, actually? It was actually about states' rights? No, man. You hear that? I'm from the North. Oh, okay. okay. See, we I learned. didn't. I okay. heard it was about states' rights. Okay. It's right to what, Dan? Exactly. The, states? the yeah. point is, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. That definitely does happen. And obviously, religious institutions are doing like that's not even a question. Yeah. It's happening yeah. right now. <laughs> like it's it's it, it's gonna keep happening. And uh, it's why we're here. It's one of yeah. the reasons why the ACA is so we can talk about this stuff and say, can hey, I ask, this is shit. Can I ask Kane? Kane, do you have do you have uh children in your life? I have uh, uh two children. Okay. And uh, two, four grandchildren, and nice. one great grandchild. Oh, I love it! So, Kane, you could be, you could be, you could be Grandpa. I don't know, <laughs> Grandpa Reason, right? You could be like the source in those yeah. kids' life to ask them little riddles, little questions. I'm sure you already do something like that because this is on your mind. But find ways of, of teaching them to to navigate the difficult aspects of life. Of course, you're. Your uh, your grandkids and your kids might want to hit you over the head with a stick if you if you cause them to question bedtime, but but there's lots of ways that on a small level you can affect so many. And I, I'm not telling you that you don't think this, but you can you can improve the world just with that. That alone makes makes things a lot better for those kids and for all the rest of us who will be living with those kids as they grow up and and they take over. They take That's over right. the future. Amen. Amen, yeah. Johnny. Amen. Kane, last thoughts before we let you go. Well, un unfortunately, they have a grandmother that's, that's a Christian. Mm, yeah. So she's yeah. trying to indoctrinate them the other way. Sure. Well, and hey, you just got to keep fighting the good fight, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, your goal isn't to make your kids atheist, right? Yeah. Your goal is to teach them critical thinking skills, right? Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you feel this way, Kane, but if I ever had a child, and they decide they want to be a Christian, I, I would think that's not great. But if they're going to be loving and compassionate and their interpretation of Christianity is, oh, I'm actually going to do the best for all human beings, black, white, gay, straight, like whatever. And like, that's what they take away from it. I, I would rather live in that world. I would rather live in a world where yeah. people are choosing to interpret their religion as inspiration for compassion than a dogmatic set of ideals that nobody can live up to or should live up to, that's fine. But uh, you ha you can only do so much, right? And uh, you just being there and you just talking about yeah. it, that's that's good. That's a good you, thing. You're I, the counterpoint. Kane, you're the right. counterpoint to those kids' education, right? True. So that's it's not a true. bad place to be. Kane, we do have to let you go because we are running out of time with the show. But I do appreciate you calling in.